Alright, hello and welcome everyone. So, today we are going to be talking about Legends of Runeterra. This is the League of Legends card game, and I have been playing it for since it came out. Uh, and it's extremely, extremely good. The gameplay is phenomenal, but that's actually not the main thing that I want to talk about today. What I want to talk about today is what Runeterra is doing for the digital card game space in terms of accessibility, because it is doing it legendarily, uh, and I hope that it influences literally all other digital, at least, card games going forward, and hopefully influences some of the other existing digital card games to be more like it, because what this game is doing is the best it has ever been done in terms of friendliness to new players and also just friendliness to your wallet as a card game player or as someone who wants to play a card game for free and still get to play the decks that they want to play. So with that baseline stuff here, uh, this is League of Legends based. There's a lot of League of Legends theming, but it does not have any real like gameplay connections to League of Legends. It's not a MOBA. There's not five players on teams. Uh, it is 1v1 outside of one special mode where you can have two players on your team. Uh, it is 1v1. You fight each other to the death. Your health is considered to be the Nexus. That's like one of the, the main things that is very League of Legends. Uh, and otherwise, you're just going to see a lot of the characters and places that is from League of Legends lore or League of Legends general. You'll see Teemo, Jinx, Elise, characters that you might recognize if you're familiar with League of Legends. That being said, you do not need to know anything about League to play this game. As I said, it is pretty disconnected and they do a good job of giving a lot of these places and characters flavor all on their own in this game by itself. So you don't really need any foreknowledge going in here other than whether or not you want to play a card game or... Maybe you just think you might want to play a card game and then find out you don't like them. Either way, this game is League of Legends themed. So, for that, whenever you get into this game, there are extensive tutorials. Very extensive tutorials. Extensive to the point that I have not done all of them. And they've added more as expansions have come out for this game. Also, relevant point here, an expansion for this game just came out uh, three or four days ago. Depending on when this video goes live. Uh, so... There's even even considerably more tutorials than there were before with this Deadly Grace uh, having just been added and such like that and speeding things up as well with even more new tutorials for the new cards. So all of this full, complete explanations of what's going on in the game and getting in while also adding to like, you know, introducing you to the different champions and things that you might have in your deck. And speaking of your deck, the big, the big thing in this game is that it is trivial to put a deck together it is absolutely trivial because card games in the past and kind of forever have been known for two things one they're hard to get into and two it's very expensive now this game solves both of those problems because i think this game is very easy to get into because of the extensive tutorialization that they've done and the huge expense that you might expect from like a Hearthstone where you expect to spend two, three, four hundred dollars on probably getting the deck that you want to put together on card packs and stuff, uh, that doesn't exist in this game. In this game, if you want a particular deck, that deck cannot realistically cost you more than $30 to fully and completely acquire with each card that you want for it. You can technically spend more than $30, but if you're building a deck that's kind of in any way like good, it's it's very very near impossible to do so. And what that translates to is that there's a lot of decks that you can put together for less than $30 because it's hard to make one over $30 without making a bad deck. And that's absolutely phenomenal. $30 in other card games will get you maybe a starter pack, um, that a deck that sucks maybe, um, a deck that just is like exists, but it's, it's just not great. Like you don't feel like you're really like playing like what you want. You're just playing by your means. 
And this game, you just really don't do that unless you're completely free to play. And if you're completely free to play, I would say that you only do that for maybe the first two weeks, maybe the first one week, honestly, depending on what deck you're going for. And that is a phenomenal, phenomenal thing. So how does getting cards in this game work and that it can make getting these decks for so cheap a thing? It's really simple. Card rarities cost exact amounts. Champion wild cards are 300 coins. Epic wild cards are 120. And rare wild cards are 30. Commons are 10. And these wild cards translate directly to the card of the given rarity that you want to put in your deck. Now, the really, really smart, big brain intelligence has come in where champion wild cards, you can, these are 300 coins, which roughly translates to $3. And you might be saying, well, if you run a bunch of those, it's really easy to get over $30. That's, that's whole, only 10 of these would be $30, right? Well, the big brain here is that you can only run six champions in your deck permanent like you there you cannot go over six champions in your deck at any given time whenever you're building your deck and many decks will run less than six often often at least three but sometimes even fewer than that so this is the bulk of the cost of a deck where if you run all six that's 18 dollars uh and then these cards make up the rest so 300 is three dollars that means epics cost about a dollar 20 rares are 30 cents and commons are 10 cents and these are honestly like really really fair prices and in most cases you're not going to be spending money on commons rares or even epic wild cards depending on what deck you're building and you're going to build those up over time because you're not just going to be purchasing these that's not the only way to get these you also have a variety of other ways to get these cards that you're looking for or the other currency which is the um gems to build the cards as well and gems roughly translate to like basically if you have if you have 10,000 gems uh you can think of that as like a thousand coins a thousand coins is ten dollars so like ten thousand gems is ten dollars very easy conversions uh from the different currencies that you're going to be using and stuff so getting these and getting the wild cards is going to come mostly I would say from your weekly vault you play and you upgrade this uh based on you doing daily quests and things uh, and you're going to get your chest all leveled up. And at level 10, which is easy, easy to do if you just do your dailies each week, and not even all your dailies, like if you pick a couple of days to do your dailies, uh, you're going to get your chest to level 10 really easily. And you're always going to get a champion wild card every single week, which is $3 worth of value going towards a new deck, plus the three chests that you're going to be opening that are going to be at much higher quality whenever you get that you're going to usually have platinum chests I believe they are at level 10 which is going to give you like a few thousand of the green gems material so you're going to get a huge amount of progress towards a new deck literally every single week that you do your dailies and that at a base level is really really good but that is not the only way that you're they're going to keep throwing cards at you the place that they have put the kind of random cards is these weekly vaults because you're gonna get a random assortment of cards and then also on the different region paths so this game uses regions uh to differentiate like what cards are kind of for what so if we look at Freljord this is going to include cards uh that are like you know a lot of ice based stuff a lot of ice mechanics are going into the Freljord and those cards basically make up the color if you're familiar with Magic the Gathering's terms uh, of Freljord Freljord has a particular style to it and it does its thing and you're gonna get those cards out of here any given deck can only be one or two colors so you can have a Freljord and then also Shurima deck or a Freljord and also Demacia or a Demacia and a Bilgewater deck and so on and so forth there's a number of different regions so if you're working on a deck from a particular region say you're trying to build a Noxus deck you can focus on getting the cards from these different rewards from Noxus because these are Noxus chests so they're going to be weighted more towards you getting the cards that you're looking for which is really nice and you can level any of these different uh regions right from the beginning and the beginning of these tracks is super super easy to level if you're just trying to get your decks off the ground and you're just trying to get like a bunch of cards and experiment and try a bunch of new things and you're a new player 
I'd really suggest leveling all of these to like eight super quick, which shouldn't take you very much time at all. And then after that, it's just a pretty consistent way to get high quality rewards. You get, you know, an epic wild card. It's like 120 coins worth of card, platinum chest, get a bunch of stuff. Champion wild card. That's any champion that you want to build. Chest, chest, another epic card. Champion capsule, which is always going to have a champion in it. They're going to give you the stuff that you need in order to play these regions if you are going through the region progression. And that stuff is just awesome and really helps a new player get off the ground even if they're not spending money. And now let's talk about some different decks uh, that you can put together and like what the costs of those decks are based on kind of the style of deck that they are. So if we look in here, uh, I have a few different decks that I want to talk about. And the decks that I'm going to be talking about are going to either be brand new, because like I said, the expansion came out pretty recently, uh, or are going to be kind of like longer term or high tier meta decks that you can put together for the, the costs that we're going to talk about. Uh, also, there's also my pet deck, uh, which is Deep. Uh, I love Deep. I think it is just like thematically really awesome. The point of a Deep deck is to... Uh, mill your deck down like self mill with toss uh you self mill yourself down to under 15 cards and then once you are at deep your cards get huge because cards that have deep get a bunch of stats whenever uh you're at deep and you make all these big monsters and kill your opponent uh and that's that's what this deck is all about and this deck i think is if you want to play if you want to put big huge boys on the field and just slap face like, if you're a green player from Magic the Gathering, I think this is probably the place that you would really probably want to go to, even if self-mill doesn't sound like traditionally from Magic, where you'd be going for getting huge creatures. In this game, Deep makes big boys. Uh, and this deck runs about uh, 22,700 of the green currency, which is this currency, and then that converts, as you can see, really cleanly down to about 2,270 coins, which is roughly 22 bucks to put this whole deck together from scratch if you're starting with nothing. If you have even, like every common wild card takes 10 cents off of that. Uh, like every epic and all, all the things takes a bunch of cost off of this deck. And also just so you guys can see it uh, in the store, you can see the, the general cost of how I'm, I'm getting these values. I'm going off of $20 being spent. I'm not taking into account, like, if you decide to spend $100 on the game, I'm just putting, like, the very reasonable, um, like, spending 20 bucks on the game and then, like, calling that, you know, $20 for 2,000 coins. This is not some fantasy land cost of decks that I'm talking about here where we're, like, considering that you're always going to get um, 11,000 coins or something silly like that because I think that's pretty unreasonable personally. And I also feel like most times, if you're going to make a purchase in this game, you're just going to buy the $20 one because you you don't need to buy more than this. This will make the whole deck. So why buy this one unless you're future-proofing, which is a thing that you can entirely decide for yourself. Uh, so that is how I'm getting like the numbers that we're talking about here, if you're curious. So... That is, my, my pet deck is is deep, and that's about $22. It's on the more expensive side. It only runs three um, Nautilus, so it's a three champion deck, uh, but it runs a lot of epic cards as compared to pretty much every other deck in the whole game. So it runs a little more expensive, even though it cuts down on champions. With it, because it only needs Nautilus, of course. Uh, with that, let's talk about uh, some of the other meta decks. Uh, we have Nasus Atrocity. Uh, this is the deck that I was laddering with last season, and I was in Diamond. Unfortunately, I didn't play as much as I should have to get to Masters, but this is a very, very good deck. This is possibly the single best deck in the game right now, uh, and this deck uh, runs about 25,000 of the green currency, which translates to 25 bucks. So 25 bucks to get basically, you know, I would say I, I would probably consider this to be the best deck currently in the game. Uh, it just received a little bit of a nerf, but I still think it's absolutely incredible. Uh, and this deck focuses around killing your creatures. Uh, and whenever you kill your creatures, that makes Nasus larger. So you get a really huge Dogman. Uh, and then you use that really huge Dogman to slap your opponent to death. Uh, with that, there's also Thresh in this list. Thresh wants to see other units die. And you killing your own units and killing the opponent's units is the whole point of this deck. So if he's on the board, sees any six enemies die... 
uh, he can then transform into his second version, which is a main mechanic of this, uh, is the champions leveling up. And whenever he attacks, he will go and get a Nasus for free from the deck, which is a huge way to win uh, with this list. Uh, obviously, I would love to go into depth on any given one of these decks. If you guys are interested, please let me know if this video is interesting in the comments. Uh, and I'll go into like what these decks are more about uh, in the future. But I'm just going to give like really brief summaries of like what's going on here uh, in terms of like what these decks do if you're looking to get into the game. Uh, another deck that is a uh, very long time here, uh, well, a long time since like the previous expansion set, I would say, uh, is this Frozen Control deck. So this deck focuses around summoning big boys eventually by using Lissandra and other means to summon thralls, which have countdown. And after they count down to zero, they summon the thrall, and the thrall is a huge 8-8 with Overwhelm, also known as Trample, um, from Magic the Gathering, does the same thing. So that makes huge boys, uh, and then also focuses on using this Lissandra to level up and give you uh, this Watcher card. And then once you've summoned things that cost eight or more four different times, this costs nothing, and it destroys the enemy's deck whenever it attacks. So that is another way to win uh, with this deck. Generally, this deck focuses on just killing your opponent's stuff and making sure the board is clear so that your stuff can count down and you can get to your big end game finishers and then also runs trundle just for beating the boys up uh and uh having a lot of defense because this thing regenerates every single turn so yeah that's that that's what this deck is up to uh frozen control runs about 29 dollars. this is the most expensive deck i was able to find on the current kind of meta tier list that a lot of people use which is on mobilytics um this is like the most expensive that I, I could realistically find. Uh, and honestly, this list, like you, you could make it a lot cheaper very easily by just cutting, like you could cut a trundle uh, very, very easily and not make the deck much worse. And you, you could cut a few things here and there if you didn't want to spend 29 bucks. But again, 29 bucks in terms of card games is like nothing in the, the current um, gameplay space that we're in right now. Uh, with that though, Let's talk about some decks that are on the way cheaper end and decks that you can start with. So we have Posse Up. Uh, so Posse Up is a new deck. And the main thing I want to talk about here before <clears throat> we go into the cost of this is that Teemo, uh, the, their one, the one champion in this deck, the single copy of Teemo, is more of a trick for your opponents that, honestly, as people understand what this deck is, is probably not going to work. So you could very easily cut this and shave off 3,000 of the green currency um, or like $3 worth of coins. Super, super simply from this deck. And this is the basic, basically the cheapest deck um, that I've put together here. This deck's whole purpose is that you use uh, Kyrian, I believe I'm supposed to say that, Sump Worker. Whenever you summon two Sump Workers, they transform into a Sump Work Posse. And this is elusive, which is basically flying, means anything that doesn't have elusive can't block it. And it is a 4-2 that deals one to every enemy and the enemy's nexus. So this swings for five every turn, and opponents start at 20 life. So all this deck does is copy the sump workers with cards like iter Iterative Improvement uh, to make ones that are larger, make extra copies of it. Fading Memories to get ephemeral copies, which die at the end of turn, so you can use those and then swing in and deal a ton of damage and really just kill opponents super, super quickly uh, by doing stuff with Sump Worker and then bolstering that up around the edges um, with cards that are just good at attacking enemies and dealing damage to their face. So this is just a Sump Works kind of build around. Uh, and this deck costs like nothing. With the Teemo, uh, this is at... Uh, 9,500 of the green currency, which is 950 coins, which is about 10 bucks. And it's seven bucks if you take the Teemo out and just throw in another copy of Get Excited, which is probably what I would suggest, or another copy of Unspeakable Horror. Really depends on if you want to throw in another common or another rare. I would say these cards are, are both fantastic, and it won't matter too much which one of those you throw in if you want to make this deck cost seven dollars instead of 10 bucks. So, that's really easy to build around. This is a brand new uh, deck. This card just came out. It's just a really good common. Uh, there are lots of really good commons in this game, it turns out, because they're not balancing based on rarity, and that's pretty clear. Another one that is very, very cheap to put together, and that is because you start with a lot of the deck, is Spider Aggro. So Spider Aggro, if we look at this list, uh, this is a uh, Elise list. 
and if you looked at like the total amount that this would cost you it would be 14,500 of the green currency which comes out to about 15 bucks but the trick with that is that you start as a new player with two copies of Elise and a bunch of other cards too so if you start with two Elise and count those other cards this deck actually goes all the way down because you lose 6,000 immediately upon having the two Elise. Uh, this deck goes all the way down to $7.50 because you chunk out all of the cards over here in this list. All the cards in this list are the ones that are just going to go directly into the full spider aggro list. And these end up at 7,100 of the green currency. And, and that means you're going to spend, if you wanted to spend on this list, seven and a half dollars uh, which is really, really easy to put together. And honestly, this is the list. Uh, this Spider Aggro list is probably the one that is like the easiest deck in the game to put together. I would say if you play for a week with a starter deck such as this one, um, which is like some, some good basic stuff, I'll actually throw the deck code for this one uh, down into the description below. So you can grab this if you're a brand new player uh, and just like get in and start playing and see if you like it. This is like a pretty reasonable starter deck. Uh, grab that and just like see if you like it it's a good way to try out the game this has like a bunch of different things and it. it's a very aggressive deck that still does some other different types of controly things sometimes with the cards that are in it uh and that just converts directly into spider aggro if you like the aggressive slant of it or you can convert into like a different deck like <laughs> really whatever of your choice because there are a lot of options of stuff to play in here like legitimately the balance of this game also which is a, a huge upside is that like i've got two deep decks here which are kind of doing different things they're different builds this one uses maokai this one doesn't have maokai um deep competitive deck that i think is like pretty good at ladder especially good against aggro in a lot of cases frozen control good against aggro and it has like a nice combo finish uh really a fortune is a deck that i've been like kind of like brainstorming and seeing like what it can do since the new expansion i uh, not sure like the latter possibilities of this quite yet because it's not really refined at all. Aurelia's Ear is like the new hotness that a lot of people are playing that's very good. Uh, Nasus Atrocity, like I said, this might be the current best deck in the game. This Posse Up deck is really aggressive and needs to like needs if, if your opponent doesn't have solutions, it's going to kill opponents really, really fast. Um, and that's quite good. Uh, Soraka Kench, uh, this is a control deck that's based around healing and has like alternate win conditions and stuff in it. I would say this is like totally viable. Inspire Aggro has always been great. And this isn't even like all the decks that you can play. There's a huge list of decks and like a huge amount of champions that are all like viable and just good on ladder. Like if you just want to have a good deck that's built around the Lissandra, well, I guess we already talked about the Lissandra one. If you want to build a good deck around Riven, that exists. Jinx has a deck. Braum is, goes into a deck. Like, Maokai's in a deck. Ash has her own deck. Like, Renekton has his own deck. Like, there's 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 plenty of stuff here that's going to be like, oh, I just like Zoe. Well, it turns out Zoe's really good. So you can just build a list around Zoe, and then off to the races you go. You want to build around Lucian? Do that. That deck exists and is pretty good. Is it Tier 1? Maybe not. It might be like tier two, but the difference between tier one and tier two in this game is not that far. And it's going to really depend on like matchups in a lot of ways. Like if you're going against Fizz and you're a deck that has a lot of expensive removal, expensive removal is not good against Fizz. You know what is good against Fizz? Really cheap removal. Lots of different, lots of pieces of really cheap removal. Going to be very easy to kill Fizz or AOE stuff makes it easy to kill Fizz. Uh, but like, the different things that the champions do because they're all quite different um makes each deck have its kind of own unique matchup in most different cases and sometimes that boils down to hey lissandra is good against aggro yeah and like fiora is a combo card that is great against decks that are going to run out a bunch of really small units that she can kill easily because she has a special condition where you win the game if this unit kills four different uh opponents creatures so if they get if they if they can't deal with fiora and like you protecting her with your other cards and they're gonna play a bunch of units they're gonna have a bad time but if they're a deck that doesn't play hardly any units then you're not gonna get to the fiora win condition etc cetera, etc cetera. there's all kinds of interesting decisions and gameplay stuff that i could go into for honestly probably hours but yeah it's just a it's just a phenomenal phenomenal game that's so accessible and it's great from like it's not that it's just so accessible in that it's cheap it's also that it's legitimately a great card game that is doing new stuff uh and 
man, I just, I'm so happy with it. It's just phenomenal. Uh, I've played this a bunch on stream recently. Uh, if you guys would like to go check that out, that is up on the Stream Archives channel. Should be should be up now on the Stream Archives channel, um, which is just Brozyme Stream Archives, if you've not seen that channel. Uh, we play a bunch of games there, play a lot of the, the new decks from the new expansion, and then I was laddering with the Nasus deck like the night before that. So you can see the competitive play on kind of both ends, kind of no matter what's up there. Oh, also, last thing I should probably show is like my just general collection stuff. I've been playing since launch, and like if you want to see like generally what I have, this actually gives you a really nice breakdown of like everything that you've collected based on region, and it even gives you the, like the breakdown per the expansions where Foundations was the opening, and then Rising Tides was the first expansion, Call of the Mountain was the second, and then Empires of the Ascended is the third and newest expansion. So tons and tons of stuff here. Also, really worth noting. Uh, because even I, I was super surprised by this. The new expansion came out, um, and I built two decks, and I had spent thirty-five bucks. Like I went into, I went into here, and I bought um, this pack because I was like, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna build uh, one of the, one of the things here. Like I had a little bit of the coin currency, and then I just like grabbed this, and I was like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna build some different weird decks and stuff. And I ended up just being able to build the decks that I was trying to put together and find out if they were good just with the wild cards I had built up and my green currency. And I still have like almost 9,000 of this green currency, which is another two champions, which you, you, know, you can convert this basically to being like nine bucks. And nine bucks, if you were paying attention to how much these decks cost, is like half a deck on its own. Uh, or or a full deck in the case of like the uh, the posse deck and the uh, the spider aggro starter deck. So yeah, it's it's just so cool and easy to get into. Uh, and yeah, I just want I just wanted to discuss it because I think it's it's just really it's really putting to shame games like Hearthstone uh, and other expensive online card games. But yeah, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video and discussion. Uh, and I will see you tomorrow. Let me know if you guys want to see uh, gameplay and stuff here or like an explanation of like, how the game works or how to play a specific deck. I'd love to do that stuff.